It is so nice to be around flowing water. Just look at that go. That's what it's like when your heart is free and clear. Hey, Miss Leo. We didn't realize it, but our our time at Shadow Mountain, there was such a great cry for help from God that we had carried 84 souls, their burdens, their concerns. We would see the word through the sermons given by our pastors. By the help and grace of God, we understood it. And there was bread for the eater every day. Spiritual bread, physical bread, we don't know how we did. Uh, we went there, and within day two, I think, we ran out of everything. And suddenly, I don't know if we could even point back to how it even happened, but we were feeding people, clothing people. It was amazing. But most importantly, listening and crying with them, shouldering their burdens, hearing them, you know, watching what they tossed around in their life and about belief in God, uh, where the misrepresentations were that hurt them and caused them to run away and hide, uh, ones that promoted their self um, from what they learned, uh, you know, so that they'd have to jump through hoops and become something. So naturally, if they jumped through an earthly hoop, they just thought they were all that and stood on their own, I don't know, like golden block or something. Whew. But after we left, we couldn't quit praying for everybody. And we we started to think, like, where are we going to go? What are we going to do now that we're, like, we got released in a very unique way that after our reading the past few days, we recognized God's providence. Uh, but we didn't know why. We couldn't even concern ourselves with eating or where we wanted to go or sleep. The only thing we wanted to do is clean the bus, get organized, get clean ourselves, and just... I don't know, curl up in a ball somewhere. <laughs> and um, it was very difficult. Uh, we carried a lot of tears from the folks that we met there. There was a lot of pain, um, but also a lot of joy. There's two that got sealed and are now in the redemptive word of Jesus Christ. They are moving, they are active, they are functioning, and it is amazing. Um, there were children that just warmed our heart every day, telling us that they loved us and bringing us cookies and going way out of the way, running out of their house to give us hugs. And it would give us just enough to keep going. And we got somewhere last night at a cove and woke up this morning and we didn't even want to go take a walk. Um, we were still just unconcerned, unable, like we didn't have anything left. We had wrung it all out, like spiritually and physically. We were wrung out. Well, <clears throat> I don't know how the thought came to me, but um, we gathered up rocks, little bitty stones, and we started naming each one and setting a stone on a park bench. And looking at 84 rocks on a park bench it j it was heavy it was like that is exactly what it is. so we gathered them up tenderly and we laid them in a special place and we're like father they are yours and you know it was kind of symbolic we laid them in a place that was surround roundabout and symbolized a lot of things that god does in our life but um the moment we set them down we set them down into God's care and grace. And we didn't realize that we weren't doing it as we prayed for them and walked alongside them. But we know that life is hard, but it's even harder without the word. And of course, our concerns were with those that didn't really want to understand the word yet. Uh, were still hurt or something. And so our prayers and our heart went with them. And but anyway... The moment that we set down those 84 stones, God brought us to this place. 
And if you can see all that water just moving, that's how it is right now. I mean, it was amazing. Like, we can hear again. We noticed that the clasping of all the little barnacles down on the rocks, we could hear it. Where just hours ago, I think we were still trying to figure ourselves out inside. And so even our prayers, like, Father, please help us. Uh, we wrote our pastor and said, you know, we're kind of having a difficult time unwinding from that. That was a very big push. And uh, now we're we're out, but I don't know. It seems like we're undone somehow. But now everything seems moving. We had a delight of somebody come up asking about the show bus, and we took them inside and told them our story. <laughs> no COVID here. <clears throat> But he was delighted to hear and see the inside of the shuttle bus, and he's, he thanked us. He's a fisherman. He thanked us for doing good. That's what called it. But um, the life of the fisherman. We just had a sermon a while ago about that, and we kind of figured, like, uh-oh, that's going to be our lifestyle. Watch. The fishermen, they work all night. They come in and they bend their nets and sell their fish in the market during the day. They do the hustle and bustle of getting the crew back together, eating, spending time with their family, and then they hit the water again for nighttime. And that's how it was with us. We had phone service at night, so we'd have to uh, compile our notes. Our night started around, oh, I don't know, 8 p.m., and we went till about 7 a.m., uh, or that was our day, I guess. And then, um, so we would take a little bit of a, I, I, I think that the daytime, we were only up, out, and around, maybe for an hour. And then, I don't know, maybe around 4 p.m., you know, we would we'd visit with some folks, kind of find out what was going on. That's around the time that everybody started getting home, and the kids got home, and that sort of thing. But, uh... Come 8 o'clock, it was like, we're getting the bus straight away, ready to listen at 11. And we had a, a one window, 11 to 12.30 at night, to listen without lagging. <clears throat> if we wanted to listen to another sermon, it would take about three, three and a half hours, because we only got to listen to about four seconds at a time. And it would lag for... 30 seconds a minute. <clears throat> but we have to say that for us old folks, that lagging, like by the time the sermon was over, it was as though we totally got it. I mean, we had time to write our notes, but then we had time to talk to each other like, oh my gosh, that's like this and this and this and this. And so we were able to put it together and wait on the next four seconds worth of input. It was amazing. We, got, we were singing and praying and praising, and um, we had this fellow next to us that um, we always wondered. He was so quiet. He never came out. We were always wondering, I wonder what's going on in his life, being that close to like the active work of worship and everything at night. It had to be beautiful. The show bus was so lit up. We had all these huge... Um, kind of shop light type things that just made the inside of the, the bus like a like a Walmart night. And um, you could see it. We were right in the middle of the whole place, and you could see it from everywhere. And so when it was snowing, oh, man, it was beautiful. It was just beautiful, reflected everywhere. So anybody could see that we're up. And some a lot of people came to us at night. That was one of the things that we were just remarking over time and time again was that God's work starts at night. And boy, did it ever. They knew, like everybody in that place knew that we were up all night. And so we had this one little fella. He would come. He would come over. Okay, that's it. You know, I can't do this anymore. You know, no, nope, I just can't do it. And by the time he left, there was tears. Oh, I love God. Oh, you know, thank, so thankful I came by. <laughs> Just one of those things where it was so good to like have 
have knowledge and stance and the love of God to see inside somebody's struggle of going through the trial and be able to walk with them, sing with them, show them the word, have them read the word so that it you know, got into their own heart by their own doing. And just, I think it was, for so many people, it was restructuring their personal belief attitude to come out of a, um, what would you say? Like a, I thought it was supposed to be done for me. <clears throat> to, oh wait, I can do this? Yes, you can do this. <laughs> like, yes, you can open your Bible and read. And this is, you know, this is, we were able to point out lots of meanings and you know, the value of hanging it on your ear and letting the word come later and broaden it, <clears throat> expand it, build it. And man, now that I think about it, that was like an open Bible class, that whole place. But it is good to be here with flowing water. And we look forward to having some movement. Uh, when we arrived there, it was a place that nothing went in and nothing came out. Uh, we thought that, you know, it, it looked nice on the, you know, the property and everything, but, you know, within just a week of staying there, somebody had told us, like, this is the last chance for people. And what was amazing was that before we left, God told us in specific ways, we were people's last chance. And that was really a difficult pill to swallow. So we made sure that we were not afraid to die uh, emotionally. We were not afraid to die physically. Uh, we were not afraid to die verbally. You know, it was just like we were unafraid to step into any circumstance and speak Father's love and word to correct their wrong thinking, give them hope, give them a chance, give them understanding anything right give them love uh <clears throat> we watch people be unable to stand in front of us because they had been so rejected before they would start walking away speaking about how we were gonna be mad at them or whatever and we would have to like chase them down and hold them and say that is not what's happening do you hear my voice? We are right here with you. Now, say all that again and let's let's pray about this. You know, and so we watched Father start movement in a lot of lives. And we got the kids praying. And there was one day that we had to race into town, try to you know, meet a deadline for some kind of uh, bill or something. I forget what it was. But um, the roads were bad and da-da-da. And we came running up the hill and all the kids were there like, Mr. Jeff, Miss Jeff, what's going on? And I was like, guys, I need you to pray. Ms. Lail and I have to make it to town by five o'clock. And we need to make it there safely. Okay? And back safely. So they all, like the two scouts that came to us, they went running back to the rest of the kids. Hey, guys, 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 we have to pray for Mr. Jack. It was so cute to hear that ricocheting all through the buildings and whatever. So we jumped in the car. We made it. And on the way back, we bought a bunch of little cakes and uh, I forget, not icing cakes, but like these, these pound cakes that are really moist or whatever. And um, uh, so we took those by their houses and you know to reward them and thank them and you know, say that that's kind of how it goes, man. And it was it was really awesome to find, like, sudden helpers in God's work everywhere. Uh, great and small. Tiny, big. Yeah. I was trying to give you some air time. <clears throat> oh. Well, usually when I get that elbow, it means keep talking, so I just thought that 
sorry, <clears throat> the phone must have slipped. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we've had a beautiful time, and we thank you, Father God, with everyone that has supported us in prayer. We thank you for everyone that um, took part uh, with their hands. Um, we thank you for all the tears that we are able to offer up to you. And we thank you, God, for all the lives and the souls that are now believing that they put their last chance with you instead of themselves. And that is a great reward to come away with. And we also have two lights there now um, that are fully seeing and fully believing and fully willing to carry on the work. It's amazing! So, we look forward to today becoming an eternal day. Father, we do. Thank you so much, and even whoever listens, we want to bless their hearts too. And we ask that you remember them in Jesus' name.